yeah. more like um, general, like n n before you go into detail, you just have like a, a light, light design, uh, like exactly. a light cut file. That, yeah. Yeah, so I'm recording this because uh, if any other people join the CNC circuit mill teams, they can know what's happening here. Um, but so we have the concept right there, and uh, you haven't started by looking at the X axis file. Have you started yeah, playing? Yeah, I, I looked into them, um, and um, yeah, like I, I start playing around with it a little bit, but nothing really okay. concrete just to. Yeah, I get to know the file, and I, I still had some trouble with the um, dimension drawing um, uh -huh. of, uh, workbench. Okay. I, I downloaded one, that one because it wasn't in the, in the free cut, so I downloaded the workbench, and I, I started playing with that a little bit uh, just to, to see how it works. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, like nothing concrete so far. Do you know where the where the x-axis file is if I asked you where is it on the wiki um, yeah I found it in the yeah like in this 3d yeah part the 3d part, D3D part and library. library and then don't um, not the part index but the assembly index right below that so it's the first thing so I'm gonna click on that so that's where where we are right now so we found the file so this is the x-axis download it so let's do this in real time how we how, what we want to do and let's start this process so we can get you going and then, yeah. so so I'm clicking on the x-axis assembly. So let's talk about the very specific steps that we're, which you need to, to take from here and see how many of these steps you can go on, go through in order. So I'm going to take notes right here. So this is our working, uh, that document, let's see, that should be editable by anyone. It's our working doc. Yeah, anyone can find an edit. So if you go to that document that's uh, please work with me in there um, I'm gonna create page two so so that's page one is concept and we basically cab this up in real detail this was just a conceptual drawing using other parts actually these were used here what was used was the one inch axes but we're not gonna do one inch we, we can do a small circuit mill using the eight millimeter rods and the only trick is there We've got this motor. In fact, we got two of them. We got the 12 volt and the 48 volt uh, to for testing. Uh huh. So we want to use both of those. Get get the steps. Well, step files would be ideal if we had them, but we probably just have to take take a look at those dimensions and just draw up a simple cylinder and thing that looks like a motor. Because what we'll need to do is make a mount, just yeah, a yeah. circular mount. Okay. Because you, I mean, your your background is industrial design. No, my background is in architecture. Architect, sorry. Interior. Interior architect, yeah. but like, how much design yeah. design work have you done? Like, uh, you know, drawing up and you know, conceptualizing parts and things. You've done that, right? Yeah, like uh, if it's like on a general level, it doesn't really matter if, whether, whether you're designing a building or right. uh, a car or anything. Going into the specifics, it's yeah, okay. So, so let's start a page. I'm gonna make a copy of this page number, <clears throat> make a copy of this page. No, cut. insert uh, under slide. I'm gonna say duplicate slide, and let's just uh, edit that. So, I'm gonna go to let's edit on page two. So, in there, we'll see step by step design process uh, can you go you're in there you're in yeah, there yeah. okay so so general procedure let's let's get the steps for what we have to do right now um, So step number one is to download 
the x-axis and use it as is for x, y, z motion. Um, so use concept model of page one here. I'm going to put a link to this x-axis for anyone else. So like the x-axis you made, you simplified already. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that, that procedure you did, I just have to do that as well for uh, y and z. No, because, uh, because the axis, for the sake of simple modeling so here to clarify download it simplify it and use it for x y and z motion um it's already simplified okay you can use the same ones yeah 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 yep. i just have to make yeah like the... you have to worry about the complex file simplification procedure <laughs> complex file simplification yeah, yeah. procedure that sounds uh like a contradiction but um, so use the concept model of page one. So merge x x x axis times how many? We need two, four, six of them times six into the document. No, you just need to do merge it once, and then make six copies. Merge x axis and duplicate it five times. Well, yeah, I think that's the procedure. Duplicate it five times. So, because you, you got, you can, can, can you see that there's six axes altogether? Yeah, one, two, three, four. Like now I'm at four. I'm not sure where the other two go. <laughs> well, I mean, the Z and Y, sorry, X and Z is double. So there's two for ah, the yeah, Z, yeah. two for like the you know, X. Like yeah. They, they form like a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that well, over there. That structure only using, um, like I, I recreate the structure from page one. Uh huh. Only using the x axis. Yeah, but there's some details we're gonna have to pay attention to. So one detail is gonna be this one. So how do you do this part? Because we don't have that part that um, what's what's shown there that looks like a double yeah yeah so what do you do yeah, there where, those, where the X's meet I have to create a new part no or no do I use, the use the okay so then use the principle do not add new parts whenever unless absolutely necessary yeah so i can use the part from the from the 3d printer yeah but what i'm saying is that that part here what what i'm pointing to is wider so you okay. just use two instead of this wide part use two of the carriages you, you see that it's wider right okay. use two carriage pieces now what's a carriage piece <clears throat> I think if we look at the universal axis Universal CNC axis, it has a diagram of what parts are. So in this diagram here, um, this, this visual, this is actually a visual BO, BOM, visual bill of materials, but you'll see the part labels. This is the, you see that? That's the carriage side. This is the, uh, wait. this part, the middle one, that's the carriage. Uh, we can go to the I think there's that it's kind of complicated here 
Well, let's see. Let's see if we have a... I mean, the carriage is the middle part. Is the point. That's the motor 3D printed piece. That's the carriage piece. And that's the... That's the idler piece. But the point is that this carriage is quite narrow, so just use two of them. And what we could do is, when we use two of yeah. them, just put them right next, almost next to each other. And what we can do there is actually when we tension the belt, we can still use two pegs, uh, but just mount it differently. Like use one peg. Yeah, actually I'm not clear about the peg peg usage. There might be, it's it may get tricky for how you actually mount it there. Because uh, if you use two of them together, you, you probably can't use the bottom peg there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like if you put two of them together, the belt the belt mounting has this particular procedure where you thread it in through the belt, and it's complex. It's like I I have a video of that in another uh, in another. It's actually in. Have you have you looked at any of the former team meetings? Former what? Team meetings. Uh, there's a there's one meeting where I show actually I demonstrate how the belt is actually mounted. Uh, we don't need to take a look at those details. That's when we actually build it. But what you what you need to know for now is that we're gonna use two of these carriage pieces next to each other because we don't know like we're gonna have to mount the the x the double x axis on these. So here like let's say this is y. You mount. Two of the carriages. Does that make sense? So you see that piece, like you see where this comes from in the first picture? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of white part, use two carriage pieces. And um, if you want to know what a carriage piece looks like, it's actually here is uh, is our uh, C carriage. So this is our WebGL yeah, yeah. here. Add, add this page, like a link to this page in the presentation file. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Uh, see, you can, you know you can explode it here. You like uh, that? Wait, if you can just copy the page because I can't. Okay. Yeah, but this is, uh, yeah, it's called Universal CNC Axis. So, two carriage pieces. Mm hmm. So, Universal CNC Axis. Uh, On which part? Where the Y and the Z meet. Oh yeah, good point. Uh, so let's discuss that. So where Y and Z meet, there's that, what you're showing there, okay. Um, I don't know. I can tell you that the motor piece, like where it mounts on the motor, yeah, you have to, we have to redesign design the motor piece that will mount to the idler side. Is that clear? Yeah. So let's write that down. So design um, so put together well I mean draw the frame. Yeah, and anything that's missing I just don't add. Right, so the, you know how the frame frame looks? It's like that. 
with a cutout. Outer edges like it's gonna be like that. That's gonna be the frame. It's 13 inch by 13 inch. 13 inch yeah, frame. That's based on that frame, or that's the same frame as you made for that 3D printer, the one that like works with the magnets. Yeah, the, that one was 16 inches, so this one is 13 inches. Okay. Is there a reason for that, that it's different? Yeah, because when we cut out... You know how we cut it out? We cut out the outer... We start with 16 inches, we cut out the inside, and we cut out the inside of that, and we cut out the inside of that. Uh, babushka doll. Yeah, the babushka theory. Yeah. Um, so that's why we've got multiple frames and the point is you don't want to throw those metal pieces out that's waste you want to use yeah. them so this is a hundred percent like material efficiency which is good yeah so 13 inch frame what's the inside hole 10. with 10 inch hole yeah okay so do that that's the six pieces of that uh yeah. draw the frame Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any um, like rounded Square. edges. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, draw. So so the thing is. Um, Z. Design. Well, first of all, like, take. Let's start with the good one, the good, this higher quality motor there. Um, let's take, since that's like a more heavy duty one, let's take the first one. So step by step, we'll do the other one later. So take this motor, uh, draw, draw, a simple file of motor with exact diameter. The diameter is critical. Height should be accurate, but not get as good as you can. Okay, now draw a mount. To, um, like it still needs to be kind of simplified, or yeah. like taking up as least. Yeah. Yeah, this should be like you know five to ten k. Because because if you got the full file for that motor, it would be you know five hundred k. Draw a uh, mount. So basically design a mount for the motor, which goes into the, the which connects to the idler piece of the Z-axis. Okay, idler piece is this one. This one. See okay. it? Okay. That's the idler piece. There's idler meaning it's just the thing that the belt goes around. It's an idler. Yeah. This is the carriage piece. Okay. This is the motor piece. Yeah. Motor side. And there's the end stop. We are using a different end stop actually. Uh, the one that okay. you saw on the axis already. Okay, so I'm gonna. <clears throat> open up the FreeCAD file we've got this so now I'm gonna save this 
so this is going to be I'm going to save this and upload it to the wiki so I'm going to say uh, right so we got this here that's that's our x-axis and and the the length here is actually 12 inches so we have to you know take that piece and move it out um, <clears throat> okay because you can move this and <clears throat> have you seen uh, the draft workbench yeah yeah so in the draft workbench <clears throat> you can move things around yeah. or even let's see probably even without the draft workbench you can actually click on the idler piece and you can you can probably it probably has data let's see doesn't have data let's see if I double click on that <clears throat> place axis position yeah actually you can probably just <coughs> change the XYZ position yeah. so um, you can do either way <clears throat> that's um, to the right is the x-axis so if I change this 280 right here <coughs> sorry say to 300 uh, 350 yeah yeah that's what moves it so 300 let's say What's 300? So whatever, get the right right distance there. Yeah, so you can move it around, move things around in this file. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this, save as, and we're going to call it the CNC circuit mill, or let's call it D3D circuit mill. Okay, so we save that. Um, and I'm going to upload it to the wiki to, we should start a page for the, well, no, we already got the D3, sorry, we've got the D3D CNC circuit mill page already. So I'm going to upload this file there. Yeah, so the first thing we should do is have the CAD up, up top here, so edit that, add the CAD. So this is our what we just were in is our working document. And above that is CAD. So let's do the CAD first. So so file D3D circuit mill dot FCSTD. So, so the general practice here is, as soon as you have a, anything done on this file, just upload it. Because I actually want to work with you on this. So, <clears throat> the general practice should be, as soon as you you make some design, just upload it after every session. But uh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, wait, another question. Uh, when I have the thirty-inch frame. What's the thickness of the metal? Like uh, uh, one millimeter, two millimeter? Three millimeter. Three millimeter. It's one eighth inch. Um, I'm asking that because on the first page I can see that these uh, like end pieces of the axes they are mounted. It looks like with three bolts. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, ignore that. <clears throat> uh, okay. Ignore that. They, what we have. Yeah. Pieces. Yeah. Okay. And um. Okay. Let me just think. Because then the cube is is it exactly thirteen inch or is it thirteen inch plus three millimeters on both sides? If you attach it to to the corners, the inner is gonna be. The frame. Yeah. Inner frame is gonna be. I'm saying like the space inside the frame is gonna be thirteen inches. So it's. It's attached to its edges. You know what I'm, what, you know what I'm saying? Let me draw a Wait, detail. You're... So, okay. this is the detail of how the frame lines up. See how the corner is? Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the thing as a whole is... 
ये आप सब Yeah, this thing is like that. Yeah, so the inner, the inside of the tube is exactly 13 inch. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep, so it's oh, like yeah. that. So we're going to assume. Universal scene see axis, but assume magnetic mount. Now, what we can do there is we can make all the adjustments for prototyping using the magnetic connection system. And then when we're ready to actually start cutting, we crazy glue like one or two magnets and there'll be plenty to hold it. Um, so it's good for prototyping. And then when we're done, we just glue the magnet, like one magnet, it'll probably be enough one or a couple of magnets and it's nice because you can actually still take a knife and break off the crazy glue oh, okay. so if we have to fix it then we can but the good idea is that we have a rapid way to prototype it without having to screw in the bolts then having everything perfectly lined up we adjust it as we go along so that's a very effective prototyping system Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're not constrained to like, I mean, I know like in this kind of prototyping, it's all that time is like how you align things and you have to drill a hole, stuff like that. We avoid all of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying use the universal CNC axis. That was the last, last year's with the bolts and we can use the bolts for larger structures. Like for the CNC torch table, we probably just start with bolts because it's yeah. then it gets really heavy like the the frame's going to be 10 feet long like more than 3 meters long uh so yeah. and that's yeah. going to be 1 inch rods so that you're not going to get magnets to the small magnets to hold that unless you have a lot of those magnets you could but i think it's just as easy to um just make sure you attach it with bolts at the beginning yeah. because it's so much larger Okay, so we are up to design a motor mount which connects to the idler piece of the Z-axis. Does that part make sense? So, in this picture, let's look at the detail just a little bit. We've got, this is the Z-axis. The bottom piece is the idler piece. Yeah. The middle is the... The car the oh, carriage yeah, piece, yeah, the carriage and the top. And the motor piece. Yep. So how does this thing move? It will be the mot. First of all, the motor is attached to the idler piece. However, the up down motion occurs by the carriage piece being attached. To the carriage piece of the x-axis. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. So in fact, we probably want to label that in the main in the main picture. I'm going to label that in this main number one picture here yeah. uh, because that's important. So the detail there is. Okay, well, I'm going to label it right there. Uses a DIY spindle. And then spindle mount is attached to Z axis idler piece. Is that correct? Yep. 
I'm going to emphasize that there because that's that's the details we need to. So spindle mat is attached to Z axis idler piece. So that means this is not that block there does not exist because the because you want it to move up and down. Forget about that inside part. Um, yeah. So and it here, will be blocked by yeah. those carriages. Yeah, you have to leave that open. So here I say carriage is stationary, and then motor plus the steppers move up and down. Yeah. So the car. So just to detail that more. So the second part of that is. idler not no carriage of z mounts to carriage of x does that make sense yeah and that's all good because those as you see in the here's the important point why we left those holes look at that that's the carriage piece it's got those four holes and they are in a square pattern which means that you can attach another axis at 90 degrees to this so you can take let's actually do that so to simulate just to show you what that is so i'm gonna do close uh let's see if we can copy the entire thing uh let's see if we can rotate and copy so you see the copy in there I checked copy rotate and copy we should be able to do this but let's let me just uh, view it from the top so rotate and copy so we'll take this So copy that, yeah. and uh, yeah. So now we can actually uh, attach them to one another. We can go like that. And what happened? There we go. Yeah. So that's going to be the, how the Z mounts. But of course, it's not. It's not in the same plane. We got to move this no, one. No, no, no. Yeah. Now the only trick is you have to, the way this is tricky, um, you have to perhaps like put them all into, yeah, how do you select the whole thing now? Like the whole x-axis, the, oh, the one I, you have to like select all of them. Group. Yeah, you got to group them and stuff. So um, how do you do that? Where? Uh, like last time I did it, I uh, in the label and attributes part, I did a right mouse click, and then you have the group. Maybe there's another way to do it. Label attributes? No, like, Where? Oh, label. Yeah, like in the, oh, yeah, okay. in the left. And then if you just have a I just like copy the yeah, selection. Yeah. So just just find an empty spot and then just do what? Um, like if you find an empty like not if you don't click on the selection but just on the blank blank part of the um 
then ride my stick and then you could Oh, you're talking about this? Create group? Yeah, yeah, you could do that and then we can move all those things into that. Let's see if we can move that all into that group. Yeah. Yeah, you can, but you still have to kind of select it all. Yeah, that's one way to do it. And that's probably a good way to do it. Put it in groups like that, so then with this group now, I can go to actually move it in the proper way. I can just go... Now motion, don't copy, take this, you know, take that corner, let's say, and move it up there. Yeah. Something like that. Let's see what happened there. Something weird happened there, but okay, I, I created somehow this extra piece. But yeah, that's that's kind of how it goes. Um, yeah, so so that's how. So if we look at this, let's let's look at this. So that would actually be if that's our x-axis, that would be z, and that's exactly how they're connected. Yeah. There, the carriage okay. of the z mounts to the carriage of the y. So you see, this is yeah. pretty rapid prototyping. You can do that pretty good. So so here we already have a part of the z-axis. So then you can uh, do the other side of it, and then the motor is going to sit in between. You see what I'm saying? Like the motor is going to be attached. So here is where the motor spindle is going to be attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'll just add that spindle motor to it, but do I also have to make something to to make it attached or not yet? Yeah, yeah, you, you should. Uh, that's going to be the critical part. I think maybe the question number one is... Uh, let's like, talk about. Are there already parts for that? Or no. Do they have to be designed? No, we have to design know. that. But all it's going to be I is. Could make a... Yeah? I could just make a proposal, and, and if it doesn't work, just chuck it, and if it works, then yeah. keep it. Yeah, so if we look at the. And I will put it in a separate file, so it doesn't mess yeah. up with the stuff we don't yeah. sure will we. Right. So I can tell you, we can actually discuss that. It's actually a very simple mount, so we can discuss that right now. So if you look at the, that's the either piece where the mount's going to be mounted to. So once again, it has the four bolt pattern, just like on the carriage. So you go to this one, and uh, you know you've yeah. got that four bolt pattern. So all this piece has to be is that bolt pattern plus a thing that holds the motor. So... Uh, a thing you can probably just take take like uh, this as a pattern take the one with the four holes as a pattern for the 30 millimeter bolt spacing and, and create a block that's got the contour for the motor we can draw that up really quickly right now just for detail I mean we can get the concept right now so we don't have to mess with that so um, maybe you create a new page yeah, so I just am doing that, duplicating slide, so motor mount, that's that's pretty much the only piece we have to create, motor mount. So, motor mount is going to be essentially this. It's going to be like this, like this, and the motor goes in here. And then there's the four bolt holes. Section. This is side view. Okay, sorry. So that's going to be the bolt holes. Um, top view is going to. So you can write. Can you write top uh, side view on that? I'm going to create the the top view. Uh, 
Uh, so the top view is going to be like... Like this with the bolt holes. Yeah, and then the bolt holes are going to be like here somewhere. Yeah, so you got to get those specific dimensions. But that's what we know is that th those bolt holes are 30 millimeters space. That's the critical part. From center to center. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the other direction is also 30. It's a square pattern. Yeah, yeah, they're all aligned. I mean, here this is just a concept. Then your CAD do it accurately, but here's a, just the concept real quick. We can clean this up. I'm just doing it quickly. And then the on this part here, I mean, so you grab the motor and it's another clamp just like that on the other side. And here, what I what you want to do is recess the bolt holes. So what you want to do there, make like a recess there, so that that bolt head goes in like inside there. Yeah. Yeah, recessed bolt head, so that you use a, those are all M6 bolts, so that, yeah. and, and then we put, and then the bolt goes through that with the head inside, and then you put the nut on the outside. Yeah. So and then there's a nut in Yeah. Basically. Here then. So actually that, that bolt hole is six point six millimeters. You wanna do that? Six point six yeah. millimeters, that's what we're using. Just a little oversized. Because there's linear bearings inside of them, and you, we wanted to make them as, sh as short. You could make them square, but it would take more space, and you would have less travel on the axis. Yeah, yeah. So you want them as narrow as possible, just fitting the, the linear bearings. Yeah. So there's a logic for... Actually, this, this axis is, uh, I think, pretty well designed. It's, it's pretty yeah. good. M6 bolt. Are you the with... only ones like, who use uh, uh, these mag this magnet system for the yeah. printers? Yeah, uh, I don't know anybody else who's doing that. So the unique features are the construction set approach, the magnets, as well as the belt tensioner. Uh, our belt tensioner, we call it the best belt tensioner in the world. It's like nobody uses that kind of a peg system. And it it's like, yeah. it's least part count possible anyone who who does that has some kind of a clip or some bolt or something we don't use any of that you just use a a peg one piece yeah it's nice because it's so elegant it way. is it's a it's it's actually complex the belt goes inside the peg on one side and under it on the other it's actually quite complicated how you thread it in there but the simplicity there is beautiful and you can tension it very well. It's really easy to tension and really easy to adjust. So it's really, yeah. really sweet. Um, How much does it cost to, like, to, to get all the parts? Uh, I think, yeah, I mean the, the standard bill of materials is 325 bucks and uh, okay. we're working on a low-cost version that would be a hundred bucks. 
which is made of like instead of the frame we use like PVC corners and 3d printed pieces make our own extruder out of bolts and washers and things which is actually it sounds like it's sounds like oh that's pretty brutal like I say on an extruder but actually I think there's a you can do very well using off-shelf parts but anyway that's that's for later um, but we do want everybody to build this, one of these things on a team. You gotta get your hands one of these. So if IO does the simplification for the frame, then we can have, we'll probably be down at probably like around 200 bucks. I mean, the 3D printing, I had $45 for 3D prints in the 225 yeah. number. So, you know, I could print out parts like once I get my cluster going here. Uh, are you familiar with 3D printers at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, like, I'm not an expert. Do you know, have you ever played with Marlin? Like, no. you know how Marlin works? Because we're trying to figure out this one detail um, about automatic bed leveling that <clears throat> there's some weird stuff going on. But, um, yeah, yeah, we need somebody to help on that. I'm working out that out, but um, I gotta finish it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's how the motor mount looked like. Yeah. So then there would be, yeah, nut on the other side with recessed uh, bolt head, hole, nut attaches on outside of a uh, holder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, like I, this thing I have here, that's not. Yep. Yep. That's, that's it. Good. Yep. Yeah. So the only tricky part is going to be to, in this case, you're going to have to make those recessed holes there. I mean, it's going to look like that, that hole is going to be and a hexagonal head, basically a nut catcher. Know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, did you use that before in, um, in the 3D printer, this, these nut catchers? Or these bolts? Yes. Like, for example, here, if so you can, look at this. And then, yeah, and then I can copy that. Yeah. I mean, you can go into... If you go to, so here's the universal CNC axis. If you go to any of the files, you can, let's see, in this file. No, I don't show the nut catchers here because this is not detailed enough. But, for example, let me show you. No, I'll show you where the file is. So the file that you want to look at would be in a D3D part library, any of the original files. D3D part library, you look at the, the starting parts, like in the first spreadsheet, part spreadsheet, and the part index. Take any of the carriage pieces, you know, like that one, motor printed piece. Let's say the carriage printed piece right there, number 16. Click on that, and then you can download it. It has the nut catcher's dimensions. So a useful thing. So now here, this is the final simplified one. So don't go to the simplified one. Take the one that's 500K here. So download that one. And just to show you in a dimensioning workbench, I'll show you that, how to get the dimensions. Because you can use, you actually should use those exactly. So I'm going to open up that file. Yeah, I got, I, I got uh, to, uh, like, I got the dimensions. The only thing I struggled with was getting the um, the right views. So it, it would constantly import a um, a top view. Uh huh. Well, here's so say here's the detailed part file. So this is the carriage yeah. piece. That's how it looks inside. But what you need is that you need the hexagonal shape. Copy that exactly. So let me show you how to do that go to do you have the drawing dimensioning workbench yeah 
I downloaded that one. Yep, so this is drawing dimensioning. And then you click on A3, which is uh, create a new page. And then cre click on this. And here what you would click on, it says insert an orthographic projection of a part in the act of drawing. Uh, so first you got to select that. I think um, select that. Yeah, so it did that. It put it in there. You want a top view, so do like this one. Click on that one. Yeah, so right there. There you go. Uh, so now you go into OK, and then you click on your, your arrow, and there you go. This is going to get you all this. So, so what you care about, like that. You care about that being yeah. 6.2 and so forth. So from that you can get your complete uh, dimensions of that. So like the far corners are 12.4. So I think with that you can do that. And, and the inner part, that should be 6.6. Yeah, it is 6.6, .6, as yeah. I said. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And actually, since I've done this, this is, you know, it's a good start of a good dimensioning file. Um, I could actually save this and upload it to that, to the wiki, but, ah, forget it. We, it's easy enough. Well, no, I'm, 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 I, um, I, I need to get into this. Yeah, yeah, so, but you've got the dimensions right here if you want to. Get that 6.2, 6.6, and 12.4. Okay, so I'll quit that. Okay, so we've got those dimensions. Yeah, there'll be a nut catcher. Uh, basically a nut catcher on the inside. Nut catcher, basically bolt head catcher on the inside. A hole, and then you got that bolt pattern. And then this has to be, this diameter has to match the motor. Just matches the motor exactly. Diameter of hole matches the motor. Uh, so what I would suggest is actually maybe you work on this part. You want to do that? Do you want to? How, how do you want to start it? Do you want to? Because um, actually we we got to have a a good design by. Let's let's actually team up. Do you have time today still, or are you gonna work on it tomorrow? Well, it's it's ten in the evening. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so it's too late for you. What I'll do is um. Yeah, I can have time tomorrow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> If it's your morning, it's, no, wait, I'm going to the lecture. Um, but that should be finished. Yeah, like, I think for me, making those axes is something I could easily do. Like, I don't see, see too many troubles there. With this yeah. motor mount part, I I can see that I make mistakes. Okay. You know, because it's still a little bit it's abstract, a little, like, yeah. especially this weird shape. Like circular yeah. thing, I don't really know what what that means, but um, like I think the um, the axis should be okay. pretty full. Okay. I'll do the what I'll do is I'll do the motor mount, and then we can collaborate on that because we need to get this going. I want to have this ready for next week, but if we have the motor yeah, mount, then we can I put can together the axes. Okay. When you wake up. You awesome. That'll be good. So yeah, you can do that. And the only thing that you don't have is the spacing between these two parts. So actually, I can give that to you right now. If we go to that motor, because uh, see, you don't know how far to space these these uh, the double x axis apart yeah. to fit the motor. So let's get the dimension right now. So here you're going to use two. Simply just put two of the carriages and mount the these ones in a out with a space in between for the motor. The question is, what's the motor space? So let's take a look at that. And the cool thing is because this, actually this is very neat because whatever motor you use, because we're using two carriages there, then we can make this spacing between these adjustable to fit any motor exactly. So this is universal. You can mount any any motor in there. How are they to, like, how are these two carriage pieces yeah, that's uh don't worry about that yet. We can either uh make an in make a belt connection um 
Right, right. No, there there will be some detail there. There will be. Yeah, um, maybe with a, um, like a thread, the, a wire, the, the same wire that's in uh, bolts and nuts. I don't know how to call it. Anymore. Depending how far they are apart, you could put them... Um, yeah, there is a detail there. There, that's definitely a detail to consider because we might need something like a little spacer there to get them spaced exactly right. Yeah. Uh, I think we might need that. So I'll think about that and and give you any insight later. But basically, that yeah. would mean that we have to make that spacing uh, both match the motor and be such that. Uh, we can, th this part here actually works. So I'll work on that. That spacing there is the detail and the motor spacing is the detail. So I'll, I'll pass it on to you. So when you get to drawing this tomorrow, you can actually put this all together according to the very specific dimensions. Cause I'll give you exact dimensions for what exactly it has to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds you, good. You add, add a slide. Yeah. Or maybe I can... Yeah. I'm going to add a slide into theirs yeah that's it so that makes sense yep yeah so so things are going to be important We need the yeah well that's all you all you need you just need the carriage spacing because the rest of it it will be self-explanatory once I make the mount yeah All right. Yeah, that makes sense. And then that detail is not designed yet, but that's. Um... Yeah, yeah. I need to. I need to do that. So I'll do that. I'll work on that today, um, and then we can do this. So hopefully by tomorrow we actually have a realistic rendition of what this looks like. And then we can add the yeah. the table s structure later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if we get this whole thing, that'll be good. That'll be uh, that'll be cool. Because here, what you yeah. see is, um, you know, like this is kind of like a VS design in the sense that uh, this part was made simply made, so you can draw that. Oh yeah, this all fits. But this doesn't have the actual correct dimensions of, or anything. This is just an Im imaginary yeah. motor and imaginary things. So we're actually going to do the real design. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think that's why I was a bit confused. Yeah. What was happening? But um, yeah, like now everything makes much more sense, and yeah, tomorrow I will start working on it. And, um, could you just add a link to that file you're working in in the 3D? Like I'm in the D2D development page now. Uh huh. Um, that, that file you were working on. With the spacing, could you just add a link to where I can find that? Uh, or what was it called? Which file are you talking about? Are you talking about this file? Where the, where the hexagonal hexagonal um, nut uh, bolt. Uh, oh, I see. Bolt holes, where I can find. Those. You mean this one? Yeah, yeah, just a link to the file. Like on the wiki, if you could add that in that motor mount page, and let me do a copy and paste of that right now here. Here, let me add one more dimension here. One more dimension that we need is this, and I'll just copy. Oh, okay. That's 
copy and paste. Yeah, I'm gonna save this file actually because this is this is important. I'm gonna set okay. upload it. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll just uh, put this. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, I think I might X add that to the motor mount page. Yeah. Do you have class right now still, or you said? some reports and help out with some other things but I'm really flexible with my time okay all right that's cool all right so I think that's about it yeah yeah this uh, I can work from, from here and then when I wake up tomorrow morning I can get started excellent excellent all right so and yeah at the end of the day upload it to my log and should I notify you in any other way yeah uh, as soon as you've got anything like like when you're in the progress of it just you know even for backup measure just upload it when you're like halfway through and you know so that also I can see by the day where you are let's see the end of the day is about this time okay yeah 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 I'll probably have it done earlier than that okay yeah, then by the time I wake up, you'll probably have it uploaded. If not, um, yeah, l tell you this, uh, just upload it by like 10 a.m. my time. So what is that, 4 p.m. your time? So when yeah. I check that, I, I just see where you are and I can yeah. check in with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, let's see. Because, yeah, like, that, that makes... I will do it at 3 p.m., actually, because at 4 p.m. I'm going to a lecture. Okay. Um, that should be done around 8 or 9, but then I could I, we, I could check in at 10, maybe, just to see if there's anything. And then on Friday, I can also do something. Yeah. I'll take a look at what you've got. I'll check in, give you some any suggestions or anything, and then we can uh, go from there. I'll, I'll give you some feedback, see what, what else we need, and maybe additional instructions. Yeah. Mm hmm Excellent. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, Will. Well, thank you. So we'll, we'll continue. Besides, besides uploading it to the log, should I upload it anywhere else? Or no, that's fine. fine. Upload, well, upload it to the log and upload it to the, well, we already have the placeholder, right? Remember our placeholder? D3D... Where is it? It's D3D CNC circuit mill. We already have the file up here. Just upload a new oh, version yeah. of this file. So you click on this. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, look at this. Yeah, I'm now on the CNC circuit mill wiki page. And there's your file. Yes. So I will upload it there as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, this, what you're seeing right here, yeah? The file right there, yes. Above the working document. Yep. So yeah, your yeah. log and, uh, on this page. Well, it's already, if you up, well, okay, point is, when you, what you, all you need to do is upload it in one place, because that will upload, that, that will be update everywhere, so if you just put it on your log, but use the D3D, this, the same file name, that's all you need to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, but doesn't it override the other file? No, it's, uh, it's, that's the point of the version history. It doesn't override it. Uh, okay. It keeps a version history. So that's okay. that's the big point about the wiki. Uh, the yeah. wiki is a file versioning system. It includes that. Okay. So that, that's why it's very useful. It does not override anything like what I was showing you before. When you download those files, um, yeah. like for example, if you look at my screen, the universal access carriage, you see yeah. all these versions. The, uh, okay. They are not overriding. Okay, that's an important point, very important point. 
they are not overriding. We're keeping the entire history so we can click on any of the versions to download the old, older version. Like here I have the large file, 500K, February 25, and then the recent one from yeah. yesterday is 6K. That's the very simplified one. So that's a way to use the wiki to do the version history. It's very useful because instead of starting all these different files, you can um, yeah. keep track of it much, much better. Yeah. yeah. So just to recap, I will just call the file uh, whatever it was, and then... Uh, where is it? Okay. Right. It's called D3D yeah. Circuit Mill, the same file name as... Yeah. On the D3D CNC, CNC Circuit Mill page. Mm -hmm. Just use, just copy and paste that file name into your log, so when you upload it to your logger, uh, yeah. that updates on that file. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because just yeah. Okay, I will figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you're seeing my screen now, right? So, yeah. yeah. You click on this file and just simply go upload a new version of this file, but paste this file name into your log so we know. You know, I, I like to have people put stuff on their log because then I can, like, if I, if I forget where, where something is, I just uh, go to the person's log. Yeah, when I... Um, I'm on the page now and it says you can... Uh, because I'm not okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. you should be. If you click on it, you'll you'll be asked to upload as long as you as long as you're signed in. It's the uh, you click on a file name yeah. to download it, and then there's a link upload a new version of this file below that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Excellent. Perfect. All right, perfect. So we'll we'll talk tomorrow. We'll co continue and see how far we can get on this. Excellent. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.